Hi, and welcome back to the workshop for what is going to be the penultimate episode of the P-Bass build. And in this episode, I'm going to polish the body of the guitar up and set about getting the electric sorted out. Now, a few weeks ago, when I first painted this body, I said something in a video that immediately I saw it. I thought, that's not true. And what I'd said was the fact that the grain pattern was showing through the finish was something I was happy about. Having had to think about it, I knew that I wasn't happy. So, after reading a few comments on that video and after having to think about it, I broke out the wet and dry paper and I rubbed the body down. Now I didn't rub all the way down, I didn't take the paint off. All I did was I flatted out the high spots so that they became somewhere close to the low spots. And it really wasn't that bad. It was mostly the top half of the front of the body that was a problem. And as you can see in these pictures, I soon got that down to flat. And then I put the curtains back up and broke out the spray gun and I gave it another two or three coats of white. By this point, I was getting quite low on the white paint. So to make sure that I had enough material on the body to work with, I then gave the whole thing about four coats of clear lacquer. Now happily for me, that's actually left me with a very, very flat body. It's a little bit dull because it got a bit of overspray on it, but there isn't anywhere near the amount of orange peel that I would normally have. So. I see this as quite a quick and easy fix in terms of rubbing down and I think I'm going to be able to start with 600, go to 800 and then 1200 paper and then polish this up. Obviously quite a lot of this is covered by the pit guard. Um, I don't think it's going to save me a huge amount of time not to polish that so I'll just do the whole lot and we'll see where we are. So we'll get started. Now all I've done again is I've got a little bowl of warm soapy water. So this is, it's not dish soap, it's hand soap. And the soap's in there to draw kind of grit and particles off the paper and keep it in the water. And I'm just going to start again, small circles. This is 600 paper. dry that off and catching that in the light just that quick rub with the 600 paper has got that flat so hopefully this should be a quick and easy process so I'm probably going to switch to fast forward now but I'm just going to repeat that process on the whole of this body Okay, so I've just done the whole thing with 600 paper. It took me ages, um, but it didn't take me anywhere near as long as it has done on other builds. It was quite an easy task in comparison to normal. So I'm going to go and do the whole thing again with 800 and then 1200, but I think this will be quite a quick process. Okay, so this has all been rubbed down now to 1200 grit. Uh, feels lovely and smooth. Um, all of the grain has gone now. It's completely flat and smooth. So it's time to get a bit of compound onto the job. You might notice I'm wearing my big overalls because I've broken out the big polisher and this is going to get messy. So to polish this up, I'm going to use a water-based rubbing compound now, I really like using this compound. Um, I've been using it for absolute donkey's years and it's always worked for me. There might be other ways of doing it, but I'm happy with what I've got here. What I like about this compound is it's water-based, so it doesn't stink, it doesn't mess everything up. 
it's easy to clean down but also the abrasive particles in this are specifically designed to break down with water and friction so as you polish this paste actually gets finer and finer and you can just end up with a really really beautiful sheen so I'm going to stop talking just give it a quick damp down this stuff works best when it's a little bit wet just put a couple of little dobs on and we'll get polishing Okay, so that's the top and the top edge done. Um, normally I'd speed stuff like this up quite a lot just to kind of get through it. But in this occasion, I thought I'd do the top in real time just to show how quickly this actually polishes up. Um, it's looking really good, the top. What I'm going to do now is flip it over, do the back, get the sides done, clean it all up, and then I'll come back and show you what we've done. As you can see there from the light reflecting back off the body, it's polished up really, really nicely. I'm really pleased with that. I'm so glad I went to the extra trouble of putting the extra paint on this. Really has made a massive difference. Okay, so there's the body all polished up, looking lovely. So the next stage in this is to kind of start addressing the electronics and luckily for us on a P-Base, there isn't really that much. It's a very straightforward wiring job. But before I get into that, I want to do some shielding on both the body and the pit guard. So I'm gonna completely line the cavity for the pickups and the controls and the wiring with copper foil. And I'll put a layer of copper foil on the bits of the pit guard that will also have electronic components on them.
Okay, so with those cavities all shielded, I'm gonna put this to one side now and resume work on the pit guard. So obviously all this needs kind of wiring up, but before I do that, I'm going to continue with the shielding and cover up all the areas where there's controls on the back of the scratch plate. Okay, so there's the last of the shielding done. Um, so it's time now to get the controls back onto the pit guard and get this all wired together. So before I put the controls back on, I'm just gonna peel off the final layer of film, just in the area where they're gonna go. just so I'm not having to try and peel that off around washers and nuts and stuff from the pots. Okay, so time now to get the soldering iron on and find the appropriate socket so we can just snug all of this up ready for soldering. Helpfully, in the pickup, there was a wiring diagram as well, so I haven't had to search the internet for one of those. I've got some solder, I've got a few tools, and I've got a couple of lengths of wire to wire it all together. So we're pretty much good to go. Now I'm gonna be using this plastic covered wire. You can get this nice, authentic looking cloth covered wire. Um, I'm not sure it's authentic, for this year of kind of base. Um, some people kind of absolutely love this stuff, um, wouldn't use anything else. I mean, if it's just for the look, I'm fine with that. If they think they're getting some kind of tone benefit, I think they're kind of barking up the wrong tree a little bit there. I have used this in the past. I tend not to now, but the only reason being is the ends always look really scruffy. I've never managed to get the ends looking nice. They're always frayed and nasty looking. Um, so just for the aesthetics of that really, I prefer to use the normal wire. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the jack plug and work my way backwards. There really isn't much to this. If any of you saw the episode of the Thin Line Telecaster build where I did the wiring and getting the controls into that, it's probably a tenth of the work involved. I'll put a link up there to that episode if you haven't seen it. It's well worth a watch if you've ever thought about how you get controls into a, a semi-hollow body without using control cavities.
Okay, so that's all wired up now. Um, basically, I've just wired the output jack to the volume, grounded onto the tone, then a ground from the tone to the volume. I've added two extra wires onto that ground. One of these will be the bridge ground, the longer one. The shorter one will have a little eyelet attached to it, and I'll screw that into the shielding on the body once we get to that stage. And then I've just wired the pickup in. Um, very, very straightforward and very easy. I think it took me about probably 15, 20 minutes to do. Okay, so that's done as far as we can really go at the moment. Um, can't really do anything else with this until we start to get it into the body. So the next logical step would be to start assembling all of this lot. But that's all going to be beyond the scope of this episode. So I'm going to leave that till next time where we'll get this thing put together and give it a try out. So if you've enjoyed this build so far, like, subscribe. It really does make a huge difference and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.